Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me again today for another episode of Travel with Yendi. Now, if you have not already, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, comment down below, comment what you think about this video, and suggest some places that you'd like to see me perhaps make a video about. Hopefully, I've already traveled there. <laughs> and also, do not forget to share this video. Sharing is caring, so I'd greatly appreciate you sharing and spreading the word. So in today's video, we are heading to a country where it almost feels as though time has stood still. It is so historic. There is a rich culture, a rich history, and they are uniquely positioned geographically as well, and tons of I mean, just a wealth of information about this very special country. If you've not already figured it out, let me give you one more clue. I live in Jamaica. I could have Vaseline and grease up my body and swim and probably reach there by tonight. Well, or tomorrow. <laughs> Today we are heading to Cuba. Let's go. Vamanos. Right now we're making our way. So let's start with how simple it was to get to Cuba. I didn't realize that we have direct flights from Jamaica to Cuba. So Aero Gaviota is the airline and they operate from New Kingston and you walk into that office, you book a ticket and you also pay, pay for your visitors pass and every, it's like a one-stop shop right there. You leave Kingston in the morning and in by the evening you get to Havana. It makes one other stop in Cuba can't remember exactly where we had stopped but it does make a stop off and then you head to Havana but you did fly directly from Kingston to Cuba so that was a big bonus however it was a propeller plane <laughs> and I am not afraid of flying I am definitely not afraid to fly but the prop thing and a really mighty so let's just say that um, I held my breath quite a bit and I was a little uneasy but God is a good God, he's a mighty God, and won't he do it? I arrived safely, myself and my girlfriend. My girlfriend literally joked on me the entire flight. <laughs> because as I said, I'm not someone who's afraid of flying, but the propeller thing and me is, there are too many stories there. But alas. Hola Cuba. Hola mi amigo. Buenos tardes. We made it safely. So basically the you you spend an entire day traveling because you do that stop off i believe it was in santiago but you do a stop off and then you head to havana so let us now let's go to sleep let's rest and refresh ourselves and get ready for this trip now this was only a three day trip really short but really sweet and jam-packed of good memories so day one kick things off with a city tour now one of the most endearing things about Cuba is just exactly that it feels like time has stopped everything stood still uh, and the architecture the aesthetic the vibe of the place is literally like we have not left the 50s it's really awesome so of course you know to do a city tour we were going to pay the little bit of an extra bit of money to do it in a classic car and of course you know, went for the convertible honey <laughs> so with the classic car we drove all around the city and got a really nice guided tour from our driver and we saw tons of cathedrals beautiful churches uh the capital the you know all of these historic national buildings that are very significant in the history of cuba and then we took a nice stop in the revolution square so let me drop some knowledge on you about plaza de la revolution so in this plaza it's the revolution square it's a wide 
broad area. Now, in this area, tons of political rallies happened. This is where Fidel Castro spoke out to the masses in many of occasions when he addressed the nation for very important issues. So the main feature of this square is a memorial dedicated to Jose Marti. It's a massive, tall uh, structure there in his honor. Also, you know, there are tons of you know government buildings and the ministries the national library they're all around there but a very standout feature is you can see two faces uh, on the sides of the buildings and one of them is Che Guevara who is noted as an important hero in the Cuban revolution and there's a quote there that says hasta la victoria siempre and it means until the everlasting victory always. And also, there's another figure which is often mistaken for Fidel Castro. Even I thought it was Fidel Castro, but it's actually Camilo Cienfuegos. And there's a quotation there that says, Vas bien, Fidel. You're doing fine, Fidel. So many of us know the history of Cuba as a communist society, but also when they're under immense pressure from external forces where non-conformists in holding very firm, they stood very firm in their position, not bending and succumbing to the pressures of external countries. And I mean, whether you are for or against communism or whether you support whatever your views are, the fact of the matter is standing in that square there was a lot of history that happened in that square and that held a deep significance for me even in just understanding the way the world works and the way things are and what makes things tick. So then we went on to explore Havana Vieja. So, you know, you have these very narrow, almost pedestrian only laneways and tons of shops and tons of culture and history and richness as you're walking through. The museums are there, art galleries are there. Just everything that makes Cuba Cuba is accessible right there. And we bought up on what I felt like one of, was one of my best experiences in the whole weekend in Cuba. So we came across this live music spot, a lunch spot, and it was everything. I feel like my girlfriend and I made the best memories there. We had our drinks, or oh, we had mojitos, that's right. We had our mojitos, listened to live music, we were dancing, we were singing, Guantanamera. Guantanamera. I Guantanamera. Guaida, Guantanamera. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. It was the bomb the best experience and we just lounged there for hours and hours and hours because we didn't want it to end it was awesome so we had ice cream we just lounged we we just soaked up culture till our hearts were content then let's head into day two so on day two, we took a little bit of a trip and decided we were going to have a beach day. And we took about a 30 to 40 minute drive and we headed to Santa Maria del Mar. Santa Maria del Mar is some of the most pristine, blue, stunning waters I have ever laid my eyes upon. The beach was gorgeous the sand literally felt like powder as in powder it was absolutely stunning the water cold <laughs> it was very cold so we had gone in march and surprisingly the temperatures do drop quite a bit in cuba in march so the waters were not yet warm but still went in couldn't go that way without going in but also what i never expected was a nice little pleasant surprise 
Uh, there was henna on the beach. What would you, I mean, who would have thunk it in a merging of cultures, but I had some henna done while we were on the beach, ate some fresh food. Woo! It was a beautiful experience. It really was nice. And in my true to form fashion, in, every, in any country I visit, I always try a local bear. Tried their local bear? Highly recommend it. So good. Day three. We started day three, so we took a walk from our hotel. Our hotel was right on the Malecon, and we took a walk from our hotel, found this cute little cafe on the Malecon. We sat down there, we watched the water, water. <laughs> we watched all the classic cars go by, and that was where I was first introduced to something called Cafe Bon Bon. <laughs> now it is a coffee it's like a, a shot glass of coffee but it has condensed milk on the bottom and it have I don't know whether it's rum cream or just rum but let me tell you honey it was a great start to the day <laughs> we knew we were in for a treat when we started our day with a cafe bonbon cafe bonbon and marecon and we just looked out onto the Malecon and soaked it all in. It just, it was just so special. You, Cuba is so unique in what it has to offer that every single aspect of it feels very special. It's, it's like nowhere I've ever been before and nowhere I have gone since I have been to Cuba. So after we finished having our cafe bonbons on the Malecon, we then decided to explore Old Havana. Now, Old Havana is uniquely curated. I know they didn't do it on purpose, but it feels like it is staged for a performance or for a movie or for a set or it just doesn't even feel like real life. But it does something to you. Being in a space where everything is so rustic and dated, you just cannot ignore the reality of what this country has endured and the history of this country. I found Old Havana really special. And there are two things that stood out a lot to me in Old Havana. So number one, the lunch spot that we went to was called La Guarida. Now La Guarida was hands down without a question the best meal I had the entire trip in Cuba so I struggled a little bit with food because everything in Cuba was jamón con queso which is ham and cheese um, arroz con pollo and uh, y frijoles um, chicken and rice and beans no they're very traditional Cuban dishes but unfortunately I don't eat pollo, chicken, and I don't eat jamón, ham. So I'm pescatarian, so I struggled a bit um, in just finding options for myself, but La Guarida was absolutely exquisite when it comes to the quality of the food. Even my girlfriend, I believe she had oxtails there, and she was just like, yeah, this oxtail proper, proper. It was so good for her as well. Um, now, the building where La Guarida is, is rustic, it is, it takes you back in time. I mean, even going into the restaurant, the tablecloths that were laundered were hanging and drying in the building as you made your way up to the restaurant. You're crazy. <laughs> The restaurant itself, the tiles, the feel, the writings on the wall were all so almost perfectly curated is how, again, it felt. Um, and then you go upstairs to the rooftop and you can overlook all of old Havana. Havana, oh nana. Half of my heart is in Havana. It is everything you can imagine you literally well for me i felt high on life just being able to see it all the the panoramic view the 
it was special. Da, 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 da. I love life! <laughs> <laughs> Look at God. Look at creation. Oh, what an amazing life. I really enjoyed the experience of La Guarida and what it had to offer me in Old Havana. Wrong country. Okay. Wrong country. And now Jamaica. <laughs> Another standout for me in Old Havana was the Havana Cathedral. Now, I did not know the history of it until I happened upon it. You're just walking through and exploring the town and you're coming upon these, all these beautiful historic buildings. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to pose and take a picture in front of this building. Then I look up the history of this cathedral. And let me tell you. So the Havana Cathedral, also called the Catedral de San Cristobal, is one of 11 Catholic cathedrals on the island. So Cuba is a very Christian society, but also it's very dominated by the Catholic faith. Now, here is what... That was expected because it is a cathedral. Here's what I did not know. I did not know, I don't know if you knew, but Christopher Columbus was actually buried in Cuba. And his remains were in Cuba for many years until he was removed and <laughs> removed. <laughs> until him did any sending go back to Spain. <laughs> hmm, we're not gonna get into Christopher. <laughs> I have a lot of um, feelings about him. It is safe to say that although we're only there for three days, Cuba poured her heart and soul into me. She is stunning, she's aesthetically striking, she is uniquely special. I am yet to visit a country that is like Cuba. It really is something you have to behold. Seeing is believing when it comes to Cuba. Oh! And let me not forget, let me give some honorable mention to the nightlife. So Cuba actually has a really good nightlife as well. There's a spot called House of Music. Yeah, it's um, Casa de la Musica. Live music, dancing. It was really cool. Also, we went to this underground club spot. I can't remember the name of it, but it was quite small, quite tight, but enough reggaeton, little bit of dancehall was in there. Really just good vibes man good vibes one thing about cuba is she just she gives you her all that's how i felt and i would definitely head back to cuba and for more than three days or actually i should make it a weekend thing anybody else want to head to cuba for the weekend comment down below and let me know <laughs> but i definitely recommend cuba highly for an authentic rich experience cuba the one thing I will say for Cuba is that she's not been infiltrated by anyone else's culture. Adios Cuba! Cuba just feels uniquely Cuba and that is her superpower. Cuba is very special. Right now we're making our way 